Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to show you how to set up and trade your first credit spread on the Webull phone app. Webull changed their app interface since the last time I did one of these and I'm going to show you the differences in the process between the old app version and the new app version. We're going to be on version 7.3, which is in my opinion a lot cleaner than the old one. If you want to check what version you're on, click on the photo in the upper right hand corner, go to settings and then about Webull and then at the top you'll see the version number right at the top of the screen. Before we get started, there is a little bit of housekeeping that we have to make sure that we do. Webull only allows you to trade credit spreads if you have a margin account. Webull has two types of accounts, as you guys can see from the screen, there's cash and margin. There's also three different types of levels that they currently have. The cash account can only get you so far. You can sell cover calls, you can sell cash secure puts, you can even buy long calls and long puts, but you won't be able to sell all of the level three option strategies, which includes credit spreads, debit spreads, long butterflies, long condors, a lot of them. So if you are following along and you don't have the ability to sell credit spreads when you guys are looking for it, highly likely that you guys don't have a margin account. Easy way around this, go ahead and just apply for a margin account and level three access. And Webull is usually pretty good about getting back to you after reviewing your application about whether or not you have been approved to sell um, credit spreads given your account status. With that out of the way, let's get down to business. First step is super, super simple. Click on the magnifying glass in the upper right hand corner right next to your user photo to bring up the search bar. Here you'll want to type in the stock that you're thinking of trading credit spreads on, ETFs as well. Today we're going to trade some juicy, juicy Apple credit spreads as an example for you guys to follow along. After choosing your stock, it'll bring you to what I'll call the stock's homepage. It'll have the charts and some additional information like news, metrics that you can scroll through if you guys are interested. What we want to focus on here is the tab part highlighted on the screen. Located above the chart, the graph of the stock, you'll see a string of options for you to click on. You'll see news, you see comments, analysis, options, etc. What we want to click on here is options, sandwiched between news and chart. This will take us to the option chain. You'll see a list of expiries and strike prices for the type of options you're looking to trade. This may look daunting, but don't be discouraged if you're new. It's actually really quite simple to, to understand what's going on here. Before we get there, what is important right now is to look at the bottom of the screen and you'll see the drop down menus. On the left, there is the type of options that you want to trade. For us in this example, it's going to be credit spreads, otherwise known as vertical spreads. But if you guys are interested in selling single options or iron condors or iron butterflies, you can also do that as well by clicking on that. And then the one in the middle is the side that you want to look at, right? The amount of information you want to see on the screen, puts or calls or both. In this case, we're going to look at puts. The rightmost option is going to be the width, where if you click into it, you can choose your desired width, whether it's two points, five points, 10 points, 20 points, whatever it is. Since we're selling credit spreads on app when a bullish position, we want to make sure that leftmost is on vertical and then the middle is is on puts and then for the width we'll just leave it as auto so that we can readjust and show you guys how to do that now that we've double checked everything on the bottom is correct now bring your attention back to the option chain with their respective expiry dates this really depends on how far out you want to sell your credit spreads for you can choose zero days to expiry other no otherwise known as dte you can do seven days to expiry you can do really half a year maybe even a year two years it really depends on what's available to be sold on that specific stock or ETF that you chose. Today, we're just going to choose something semi moderate and say like 42 days, we're just going to go down uh, the dates and we're going to click that click on that date that correlates to the date that we want to sell. Now by clicking on it, you'll expand the drop down tab, you'll see all the relevant information for those strike prices on that ex specific expiry date, right to be to, to make sure that we're all clear and and understand what is being shown on the option chain. The leftmost column is the pair of credit spreads that you're looking to trade. That's the strike prices, right? One, like for example, for us, we're gonna be looking to trade 135, 133. Those are the two pairs of strike prices that we're looking to sell credit spreads for. The green is the bid price, which is the price that someone is looking to buy the credit spread for. The red price is the ask price, which is something that we're gonna put in uh, as sellers, and this is the price that we're going to be asking a buyer to buy. When the bid price and the ask price match, that's when the order will fill. 
and you'll see that later on as to how we can maybe engineer or modify our pricing to get easier to fill credit spreads. Now, the cool part about Webull's new interface, and they didn't have this in the past, is that all you have to do is click on the strike price row that you're looking to trade. You don't have to click on the bid or the ask price like you guys had to do in the past or on other platforms like TD Ameritrade. All you have to do is click on the row. By clicking on the row, it'll bring up a summary page of your potential order. Now, here on the screen, there's a couple things that you, ha you, you have to check and change. First and foremost, what we're going to double check is the width of the credit spread. And we're just going to click on the width option and pulling up the width tab. Here you can choose whatever width you're going to sell credit spreads for. And really the width is just how far apart the top leg and the bottom leg is. So for example, a 140, 130 credit spread is going to have a 10 point width, right? A 135 and 133, it's going to have a two point width. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go with exactly that 135, 133 option. So we're going to change that width to two points. Okay. Next, what we're going to focus on is to make sure that we're selling credit spreads and not buying. Usually speaking, the page when you first pull it up will be green, and then you'll also see that it's saying buy. You want to click on buy so that it changes to sell. The page will then subsequently change to red, and that's when you know that you're actually selling something. You can also change the side of the credit spread that you're selling, but in this case, since we only chose puts when we're looking for it, this should, also, this should already be input. But if it isn't, feel free to click on it and change it to put. Now, if you're trying to sell call credit spreads and you just happen to sell the wrong side, click on it and it should change to calls. Now, finally, what we want to do is make sure that we're, our strike prices are still correct. Since we readjust the width, the strike prices could have moved up or down. So what we want to do here is make sure that we are selling for the 135 and 133. And as you can see right here, it's actually not 135, 133. So we have to change it back to 135, 133. Now, lastly, before we, before clicking next, double check that the date of expire is correct. Now that we've done all that, we can continue on to the next screen. Here is the price tab that you'll see a lot going forward. This is where you'll finalize the price and the quantity of the credit spreads that you're planning on selling. Um, basically, you'll see the bid ask spread at the top that we talked about briefly. This is basically what people are asking for and what people are bidding for for this credit spread. The order type is usually automatically set to limit. Okay. I would not recommend changing that and leaving it as a limit usually lets you play around with the price a little bit more. So leave it as a limit. And the starting point of the limit price is usually the mid price between the bid and the ask, right? This is usually synonymous or usually um, the same across all different platforms. Doesn't matter if you're in Webull, TD Ameritrade, Schwab, um, Fidelity, or Robinhood, it's usually the mid price, which is the midpoint between the bid and the ask. Now remember, the price that you're placing when you're selling a credit spread is usually is the asking price. If you really, really want this order to close with a high probability chance of closing, you can refer to the top portion, right? That we just referred to, the bid and ask price. If you place the same price as a bid price, the order should usually close because someone has already bid that price. And if you match it, then the order will fill. However, for us, we're not, we're not gonna try and do that today. We're, we're gonna see what is available on the market and how much credit we can eke out of this one trade. So for now, we'll just set it at the mid price of 30 cents per share to see if there's someone in the market that actually has a bid of 30 cents. Next, we have to finalize how many contracts we want to sell. We'll just leave it here as one, but you can sell two, three, four, five, six, as many contracts as you want that your account balance allows you to sell for. Now, just a reminder, every contract is 100 shares. So the total credit that you're projected to receive here is the 30 cents per share times 100 shares that you're selling per that one contract, which will equal to $30. You can actually see that with the estimated premium line located at the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. Next, after, after you've done all that, click on sell and a final screen will pop up. This is like basically a confirmation screen to make sure that everything that you've inputted is correct. Double check all the information here the strike price, the quantities, the dates, the side, whether it's put or call. But here you'll also see the limit price and the amount of credit you should receive if the order does close, which is the $30 that we just talked about briefly. And after you've confirmed everything, right? Every, you make sure that everything is correct. If this is the order that I want to place, just click confirm. And then the order will get placed to Webull to see whether or not there is an open order on the market or if an order will come in with the, with the same price that you're asking for. If the order does get filled, you'll see a notification you'll see a notification come down from the top and the screen will look slightly different than this. But if you don't, you can always just wait and see if someone will come in with that same price that you're asking for and get that order filled. So if you are just looking and you really want to sell this Apple credit spread, for example, for $30 and you don't want to go any lower, that's it. Like you're done. 
this is this is it like you just got to wait for someone to fill fill the order and we will only has till end of day they don't have this good till expire option yet so you have to place this order every day if you really want the 30 dollar option um, also one thing to notice too you'll see on the screen that we have this working stamp located in the upper, upper right hand corner this is basically just indication that the order is still being filled and has not yet been filled we're just we just really really want to get this order closed today we want to walk you guys through the whole process end to end and just see how low we have to go in order to get this order to fill so at the bottom of the screen you can see you can either cancel your order or you can modify your order and so what we're going to do is we're, we're going to modify our order by clicking on modify order, you'll see the previous like price screen that we just saw. Here you can, again, adjust the quantity if you want to sell more, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to adjust our limit price down. The reason we're adjusting it down is because the ask price is usually always higher than the bid price, right? You usually want to get something for as cheap as possible and you usually want to sell something for as expensive as possible. So if I'm, if I'm really wanting to get something to close, I have to adjust my limit price down. Don't adjust it up because then highly unlikely that you'll get the order filled if your previous cheaper price isn't filled. So what we're going to do is modify our limit price down by one cent to 29 cents. When you're done adjusting, same thing, click sell and then double check the information and then click confirm. You may need to adjust it a couple of times as you can see us doing on the screen uh, in order to get a matching price point to your order. If it closes, you'll see that notification drop down from the top that I talked about and the upper right hand corner that used to be working will be changed to fill. This is how you know that Webull has finally filled your order with someone else who was willing to buy that option at the same price that you're willing to sell the option for. Here, you can see on the screen, we were able to get our Apple credit spread for $28 or 28 cents per share. Now, if you really wanna double check and confirm that this option is actually sold and you own it in your possession, you can go to positions, uh, which is basically the, the Webull home screen, in my opinion. It'll show up in your positions, at, should be near the top if you're filtering by date. And you can just click into it and you'll see more of the credit spread related information here. Now, if you're ever interested in closing, you can just click on the buy to close button at the bottom of the screen and you'll go back into the price tab that you saw earlier to set your limit price. Very similar process. The only main difference is that now you're the buyer of a credit spread. So you're putting in a bid price and you're waiting to see if someone else on the market is willing to sell you a credit spread at the price that you're bidding for. So remember how before we were trying to lower our limit prices? to get a buyer. If it doesn't close, we're gonna to have to raise our limit prices to get a seller, right? It's just the opposite. But the process is exactly the same. Just go ahead and do everything that we just talked about and you should be able to close this credit spread whenever you want. Now, finally, the last thing you can do is you can always sell more. For example, here we sold one. You can always go back and sell three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's assume that you made a lot of money and you want to sell more Apple credit spreads, all the more power to you. All you have to do is sell more and the process repeats itself. You're just opening up more credit spreads like we just did for that one Apple credit spread that we just shared with you. Okay, and that's basically it. There's nothing too complicated about this. Um, the old process and the new process is pretty similar. The UI has been revamped and redeveloped and redesigned to make it really much better in my opinion for traders to get a clear and understanding of what the current status is and to make it easier for us to trade credit spreads or more advanced options strategies um, as opposed to before. I'm really liking this new uh, Webull UI and hopefully, you know, Webull can keep refining the UI going forward to make things even easier for us and less screens to have to go through in the future. Okay, so let me know down in the comment section below if you have any questions about the process, if you have any questions about credit spreads in general. And until next time, peace and happy trading.